Original, you know. I make all this stuff I up. I do, absolutely. I've never heard that before. It's oh, you haven't? That should come out of my head. It's terrifying, isn't it? You it's wanna, fantastic. You want to know what goes up on it in here? So, so, hello. Welcome back to All About the Bass uh, with uh, the wonderful Nathan King and myself here, Lee and a turn. Um, where you been, Nath? You've been somewhere cool, haven't you? I have. Where indeed. you been? Uh, I've just got back from uh, Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. And you say Jakarta. Oh no, sorry, it's a different <laughs> joke, isn't it? Jamaica? <laughs> me and the wife just got back from Indonesia. Jakarta? No, she came in the cab with me. That's, I'm, I'm still <laughs> laughing at the because I remember the, uh, what, what's the, uh, yeah. What, what, how would you fit Jamaica into the, uh, you know, me and the wife just been to the West Indies. Jamaica? No, she came, she, she wanted to go. That's the one. That's the one. That's the beaut. <laughs> anyway, uh, terrible jokes aside. Terrible yes. jokes aside. Uh, just been uh, to Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, with Level 42 and we did the uh, Java Jazz Festival. Java Jazz? Yeah, and then we swung by Singapore. Did you do a jazz set then in Level 42? Yeah. Would you just play all the numbers in a sort of a jazz style? There, there are jazz elements. Ding, 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 we have a saxophone player. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which uh, you instantly qualify. Instant, instant. instant. Yeah. Uh, no, there, there is quite a lot of jazzy influence with the Level 42, uh, certainly with some of the some of the earlier stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so I've, there's a lot of acts, let's put it this way, there's a lot of acts I've seen there, yeah. a lot less jazzy. So we, we should say, if this is the first episode of All About the Bass you've seen, uh, Nathan's level 42 gig, of course, he's not the bass player in that band. They have a bass player. They have a bass player, yes. That if he w the, 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 the level 42 wouldn't be level 42 without uh, that particular bass player. But yeah, so um, I've never been to Indonesia. And is it just a big festival, Java Jazz? It's massive, actually. Yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, I think it's about the third time that we've done it over the wow. last 15 years. And You're looking in good shape for a man that's probably spent the last... 15 hours on an aeroplane. Yeah, I'm hiding it. Are you hiding it? I am, yes. Fair enough, have some more coffee. Um, so why are we here today? What are we doing today? Well, today uh, we're, uh, we're gonna compare uh, some P basses. Cool. Okay, we're gonna compare the, um, the Mexican, the Fender Mexican P bass. Yeah. And the American uh, standard P bass. Okay, so just a straight up kind of what do you get if you spend you know five hundred pounds on a P bass versus what do you get if you spend you know eleven twelve hundred pounds on a P bass? Well, exactly. Um, it's a, you know, many years ago I worked in a guitar shop. Did you? Yes. And this is the question that used to come up a lot because people would see Jakarta. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Jermaine. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. And uh, people would come in and see two basses on the wall that looked essentially the same. Yeah. As they do. And, uh, and you know, one would be 500 quid, another one would be 1,200 quid. And I yeah. say, well, what's the difference? You know? yeah. So this is what we're going to address today. Cool. So pass me the, the, the Mexican one so we can have both in shot simultaneously. Yeah, you've got to play, Lee. No. Go on. No, I can't play the bass, you know that. You can. Um, so to, to, to the untrained eye, yeah. um, from, from a sort of, you know, 20 paces, yeah. uh, there isn't a lot of difference really, is there? There isn't, uh, they weigh pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, the, they feel very much the same, very much the same. Uh, so playability wise, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, they both feel, yeah. feel good. I mean, so that's good to hear because mm. the, the, the spec would suggest that they should feel pretty similar because, you know, same scale length, same neck profile, same width uh, and, and thickness. That's right. Um, I can't remember whether or not, back, certainly back in the early days of Mexican stuff, I know that um, uh, Mexico just used to be the assembly line. So the CNC machines were all actually in California. So the same machines would make all the American and the Mexican stuff and then they'd ship all the, the unfinished sort of necks and bodies down to Mexico and, 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 and the labor saving part, if you like, was mm. the assembly and the finishing. I don't know if that's still the case now. This, 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 this was my sort of, you know, 15, 20 year old yeah. recollection of the I'm Mexican. I'm sure somebody will write in and let so. us know. Yeah, so um, similar weight, same 
Timber, by the, I think, isn't it? For yes, the, for Alder. The yeah, both bodies are Alder. Um, and uh, that's, though, probably where the similarities end, isn't it? And from then on in, we're kind of... Um, when we get into the nitty gritty of the hardware and the pickups and the finishing and the you know the, the general feel of it, um, that's obviously where the yeah I think I think yeah that's where that's where the sort of the 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 high quality parts um, are bought in on the the American one yeah um, so let's start well, which one do you want to start with then in terms of let's get some reference tones from one and then some reference tones of the other and we can talk about kind of hardware and stuff as we go along let's, let's have a look at the mexican one then. let's have a look and see what so that we're, does. we're using a funky little ab box on the floor which is why you're not going to see nathan plugging or unplugging anything and we're going into um the fender rumble 200 combo which uh, we shall review at some point in the future. In fact, we'll probably just do a general rumble base range review, but these are- In the jungle. Yeah, rumble in the jungle. These are spectacularly good value and lightweight and, and good sounding. So anyway, look, let's, 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 let's hear this. What color button do we need on here? The red one? I don't know. You know let's try it. Oh, well, orange one. Yeah, Yay, well done. Okay, so, Mexican P bass, finger style. Yeah. Classic rock bass. Yes. The P bass. So pick is, uh, is is a good thing to use with it. So, I mean, P bass. Uh, this was the like the original electric bass, wasn't it? The P bass. Pretty as much, far, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. I think there was like a tele bass. Oh, was there even there? even oh, yeah, kind of before that? You might be right. Um, so kind of. What's the sort of, you know, bass has evolved massively over the last 50 years since this first came out. Mm. 50, 60 years? Mm. God, it probably is nearly 60 years now. Mm. Um, why do you think the kind of this, very much this sort of like single sound, um, or is it, am I being unfair on the P bass to sort of say it's a single sound, but why do you think it's been this sort of uh, everlastingly popular bass style? It's, 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 it's not hugely um, tonally variable, by the standards of modern basses. You know, when you look at basses that have parametric EQ and active circuits and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, what it's got is a classic sound. Um, and there, there's a, you get a little bit of variation. We've got like a, a tone, quite a basic sort of tone thing. Yeah. But that's great, when you roll that off, you get another classic P-Bass sound. Yeah. Um, it's just the countless star of, of so many fantastic songs. Yeah. Um, from back in the day. When of course, I suppose back in the day there was less choice anyway. True. Do you know what I mean? Very in the true. days of Motown and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Uh, there probably wasn't a lot of basses uh, to choose from. I wonder if that, that's that sort of classic chicken and egg, uh, chicken and egg kind of debate that goes on with, with, you know, Gibson and Fender guitars generally, which is that, you know, do we love those guitars because they're great guitars? Mm. Or do we love the fact that all that early music, which was so fantastic, it was all played on those guitars because there wasn't really anything else to play them on. You know, a few other like Gretsch and Rickenbacker and bits and bobs like that, but the, the bulk of it would have been on Fenders and Gibsons. So you get this kind of like, you know, if they hadn't existed back in the day, would there be that kind of love for them now? But I think, I, so personally, I think it's a combination of both yeah. because they do sound great. I have to say they play great too. This is, feels really nice. Yeah. Um, well, let, let's just, okay, so let's, I kind of want to kind of go into the, the more comparison, rather than sort of this be a video just about the P-Bass. We'll, sure. we'll try and keep it very much, a, let's assume that you've already just sort of decided that you want a P-Bass and you're just really weighing up, do I go Mexican or mm. American? Of course you could go Squire, you know, if you, if you want to go uh, about half as much again. But this one is really just sort of, you know, Mexican versus, um, versus American. Yep. So let, let's get some, let's do that sort of, um, let's do that tone thing again where you're, where you're sort of just showing like, you know, kind of, treb, you know, tone all the way up, maybe backed off a little bit, just two or three different versatile kind of tones. Okay, sure. Well, we can start off with it all the way off. Yeah. All the way off. Uh, oh, sounds great. See, that doesn't, see on a guitar, I think with the tone all the way off, mm. it becomes, quite an unusable yeah, you know true. unless you want to just play sort of jazz or something like that but that just sounds like a just a dirtier fuller version of the tone all the way on i feel dirty oh dear should we turn it up a bit turn it up a bit <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah. Let's, try, let's try about halfway then. Where's halfway? About there. Right, see This is what I know. And all the way up? All the way up. I love it. Let's just do that on the American bass where we, where we roll the, the tone all the way down, so, and then we'll do it like the halfway, so cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Halfway, halfway place to stop, isn't it? Halfway there. through a <laughs> <laughs> Same thing again, halfway. Yes. Halfway house. So play play that one of those kind of like, maybe with the tone about halfway up, play one of those sort of classic Motown kind of grooves that, um, you know where the P bass would have been so widely used. Well, I think, what song? What a classic Motown song would you? No like idea. To? You said Motown, <laughs> so I'm just throwing it in there. I say a lot of things. <laughs> Come on, yeah. The, the, this is this is the bit where the, the timer on the video just goes, din, 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 and then like you know, and a, half an hour later we come up with a Motown song. Oh, do you know? What? I tell you, who's a really great example of a P bass player is Francis Rocco Prestia from Tower of Power. Wow. Now that guy's amazing. So that's not really Motown, is it? We're going no. into... Well, it kind of is. It's, it's funk Motown. No, it's not. Motown. It's, it's a lot of soul, actually. A lot oh, of soul. Okay. Pressed here. And he's all about pumping. You know, that's his thing. He yeah. really kind of pumps. Real driving. That mm. sort of sound. Um, are you, are you using, do you find the edge of the pickups nice and comfortable for like a thumb rest kind of place or oh, yeah, do you like the ones where you have the actual separate thumb rest on them? I, I don't actually know. Um, I, I think I'd struggle with that. Yeah. I think it might be a bit too far Actually away. speaking of it, is, this, is there, do you get the same kind of tonal difference on a bass as you would on a guitar depending on whereabouts you... you... Absolutely. So, oh, so very, it, very much so. Is that yeah. maybe how you would get lots of different tonal vari of variety even out of a P bass? Sure thing, yeah. The, the further back you play it, the honkier uh, yeah. it's going to sound and less bassy. Yeah. So. And then the further forward you play it, yeah. the, the um. You get that? And bassier, isn't it? I'm, I'm playing lower notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Just to make it work. I'm not. Listen. It's less pronounced on a P bass, but you yeah. get the idea. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um, I think before we jump onto the American bass, and, yeah. and, I, and we'll edit this up in such a way that what we'll probably just do is some straight, like, here's a five second sound clip of the P bass played, and then we'll just literally sound clip it to the, like, the same thing played on the American, so you can get some real side by side. Mm. I kind of notice that one of the biggest differences when you go from Mexican to American throughout the Fender range is the hardware gets quite a sort of substantial upgrade mm. so this is very much a kind of a, a, a I don't know if we where, where's best to put this on camera so people can see a nice close-up of this this is this is a very simple bridge mechanism where the strings are strung through the back of the bridge rather than through the guitar itself um, there's not a lot of mass here you know there, there's, there's, there's not a lot of necessarily string on wood kind of contact um, the saddles aren't especially large you know, I, I'm kind of thinking that's that's something I think most place most bass players would agree that the kind of the bigger chunkier bridges kind of seem to sort of add something um, to the tone. What, what's your sort of experience of that? Well, I, I go along with that. Also, you know, I think the um, the longevity of the instrument. You know, um, it, it's you know if it's a bit uh, flimsier mm -hmm. and you're really going to be gigging a lot, um, that might be something that. Um, you know, that sort of fails sort of pretty early on. These things have a tendency of sort of rattling themselves apart, you know. Right, okay. So I, I guess, yeah, if you're going to, you know, if you want to spend a bit more money, you're going to get something that's probably going to last you a bit longer. Yeah. 
Pickups wise are by the sounds of things like a, a specific pickup used for the Mexican series. It doesn't the, the website doesn't go into a tremendous amount of detail about um, yep. you know what these are, uh, but the uh, pickup on on the American base is, is uh, from a higher quality series. Yeah, it's a, it's a custom shop, I think, on the yeah. American. Yeah. Uh, we noticed as well the truss rod is very slightly different on the two. So the uh, we th we think that the mechanism is the same for the truss rod. It's you know it's just a, it's oh just, it'll it's be a, the same thing. The access point is different on the Mexican. Uh, you get to it from here, yeah, uh, which is just uh, with a regular um, Allen key, and you you get the Allen keys with it. Yeah, uh, you just tweak it up here, and with the uh, the USA one, it's the access is from here. Yeah. And you get um, a T-bar Allen key yeah. uh, with the American one, and again, that's that's kind of easier to use. Yeah. You don't with this; it's a bit fiddly getting it. You yeah. have to basically slacken the strings off, which defeats the object of then adjusting the truss rod and then tightening the strings back right. up. Right. With the American one, you slot this thing in there, and then it's uh, it's a bit simpler. Machine heads look pretty similar to me across the two. I mean, I don't know that they're identical, but they... No, I, I'm, I'm sure that the USA ones will be um, will certainly be higher quality than these. Well, but they're like vintage style, aren't they? Vintage yeah. style machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did have uh, some uh, internet research before this because the, the finishing is slightly different on the two. This is the polyester finish on the Mexican and then it's uh, polyurethane on the on the American, which is just the, the uh, we're just talking about the body here, not the, the, the finish on the back of the neck is actually the same on the two. They do feel the same actually, don't they? Um, and it's, it, we're, we're getting into sort of such minutiae of kind of detail here as, as to sort of go, I, you know, clearly there is a cost implication that the, the polyester finish seems to go on a bit faster, dry a bit faster, um, and therefore cost a bit less money. Oh, um, I'm not hugely convinced. I'm quite a believer of there being a sort of a difference, a much more um, obvious difference between guitars that use a nitrocellulose finish, you know, vintage guitars or sort of higher end modern day guitars, where the finish goes on so thin, visually the guitar looks quite different, it wears very differently. And if you're one of these kind of, uh, you know, believers in those sort of the microcosms of, you know, sort of how the wood, how the body vibrates, obviously, you know, will affect sort of tone and, and clearly a sort of a thick encapsulating finish like polyester will will um, be different, if you like, the body will vibrate differently to a very thin sort of nitrocellulose finish. But on these two guitars, it's, it's, it's polyester versus polyurethane. I, very difficult to sort of, to, to say other than I, they have a slightly different kind of, visual element to them in that the well the, these are solid colors so i guess you can't really see a difference i wonder if there are any sort of transparent things do they do some bursts yeah they do that they do the burst i just i don't know i think we'll we'll let this is a good opportunity for the comment section below to go kind of comment crazy uh, about uh, polyurethane versus polyester finishes um and i'm sure someone cleverer than us we'll take this debate up. So if you want to know more about that, just read the comment section below and hopefully there's an interesting debate going on there. <laughs> um, but uh, I was saying to Nathan, one, one of my things, you know, when customers say to me, how do you justify, you know, can you justify spending twice as much on, on an American base as you can on a Mexican base? You know, and people are sort of often looking for that one thing that's just going to make the American base or the American version twice as good as the Mexican one. Mm. And, it, and it really doesn't exist. What you have are a number of uh, either processes or parts uh, on the American base that just cost a bit more than they do on the Mexican base. And, and you add all those things up, yeah, and you end up with a base that ends up being twice as expensive. Yeah, that also, I mean, with the um, the American one, you get a, a hard case. You do. And um, a, a little pack that comes with it. Um, like I say, you've got the T-bar, yeah, like adjuster, and uh, a strap in there and a cable that it does. Yeah, I don't know. So that's a lot of things. That's good. But you've got to add it. It's like a hundred bucks worth of kind of stuff, isn't it? That you, yeah, you get yeah, with sure. maybe a bit more well, actually. Well, the case. case. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Should we show them the case? Okay, so this I is this it. is this is the case. Um, I don't think they're made by SKB anymore, but they certainly used to, and and, oh, and it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. very much in that vibe. So. Uh, it's, oh, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Here's, your, look, here's your goodies. They've come out. So it's uh, shaped on the inside, um, but like not on the outside. Shaped like a base on the inside with, uh, as Nathan said, you know, strap and stuff, cloth and all that good stuff. 
And these are the air transport approved ones, oh, so you right, okay. are allowed to. Well, I say if you chuck this in the hold, yep. uh, I don't think there's a guarantee that your base won't get smashed. No. Uh, if you want that kind of guarantee, you've got to go full flight, you know, metal one. But there, your insurance company will accept that if you have a case like this in the hold, that you did take sort of due care. Oh, oh, that's, that's so, good. you know, obviously if you put your base in the hold in a cardboard box and it gets smashed, quite often the insurance company will just go, well, you know, you're stupid then, aren't you, for putting it in a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. But if it's in a case like this, they will accept some degree of responsibility. So I'm going to give this back now to our erstwhile cameraman. Is that Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> I heard he's moving to Guildford. <laughs> Look, I think we have exhausted um, our, I'm exhausted. You're exhausted, aren't you? Our sort of uh, in-depth look at the uh, PBS. I did want to ask, actually, on the on the guitars, the heel joint is different uh, as you go from Mexican to American. Is it the same, Nathan, on the flip, 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 As far as I know, flip, reverse. Well, you've got a four bolt thing on here. Let's have a look at Let's have a look. One. I, thought, I thought they were the same. They look the same. So the heel joint by looks is the same. So they're, to be fair, there would appear to be sort of less differences between an American and a Mexican jazz bass than there would be if we were talking about a Strat or a Telecaster. Yeah. So look, let's um, let's sign out on this with some noodle doodling because this is a good opportunity to just do some playing on this one and then we'll start the American sort okay. of clip with essentially the same bit of playing. So if, if you... So, we're back in the room now with the American version. Uh-huh. Uh, so, your, what's your instant um, impression of, of how the two instruments feel? Well, I, I have to say that they feel um, they do very similar. Yeah. They, they're both really nice to play. Uh, the necks, like I say, uh, the, the spec is the same. Yeah. So it feels the same in that yep. one. And they're finished the same. Yeah. So, yeah, um, you know, yeah, they're both nice. Cool. Um, we should say at this moment, you can get either the Mexican or the uh, American with a maple fretboard if you if you prefer. Yep. Um, I think most people, hmm, most people will choose maple or rosewood based on a visual or just the kind of the feel. Particularly, I think when you're doing, I know on guitar when you're doing vibrato, maple and and, and rosewood feels just a, a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, there is, of course, the 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 uh, the age old you know does it make a difference to the tone sort of debate I think most people would agree that the the, the maple boards on guitars anyway just have a, just a bit more snap to them on than on a bass I, yeah, I don't I'll know go along with that yeah, yeah. Mm. same sort of thing yeah cool but that's great to know I mean that's a kind of almost like you know round one to the Mexican one because you're sort of saying that you know for half the price it feels much the same yeah um, I think now what we're going to probably get into is so. If you're playing in your, you know, like once every three or four weeks, you're out doing a bit of a gig and mm -hmm. it's, you, you know, it's not, not on a world stage or anything like that, uh, you might sort of go, do you know what? I'm completely fine with the, the Mexican one. I don't mind giving it a tweak every so often just as a, but if you're, if you're kind of playing more regularly and stability and reliability is um, more of a, an important mm -hmm. sort of factor. Is there anything on here that would make you think, oh yeah, I'm I'm more comfortable with this than I am with the the Mexican one? Um, well, obviously, you know, it's 
it's an, uh, an American Fender P bass. I, I guess that, um, uh, you know, ultimately, like, price-wise, mm. uh, you know, this is the sort of instrument that's going to um, certainly, you know, maintain its, its value, or, and certainly yeah. go up, yeah. after because they, they all do. Eventually. You know, um, so I think that's certainly an advantage. You know, it's probably a better investment. Yeah. I suppose what, what again, that there doesn't, I don't think there's necessarily a, a piece of spec that will stand this one up, but typically, again, you, you find that um, the American made instruments, whether it's the, 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 the quality of the, the maple that's used on the neck, or whether it's the way the truss rod is fitted, or whatever, but you typically find that they're a bit more stable. Yeah, uh, you know, so I'm particularly sure. again, in and out the case, you know, cold temperature, hot temperature as you're perhaps traveling or flying or whatever like that. I think mm. that the American stuff tends to be a bit more stable. I'm mo I think the biggest difference in terms of hardware on here is the fact that it's, a, it's now a strung through body. So if we flip the base over, uh -huh. so the strings go through these bevels on the back. And so there absolutely is. And, it, and again, if we flip it back over the other side again, you know, you can see this is a thicker, chunkier bridge mm. uh, with slightly chunkier saddles on it. Um, so there, there, there absolutely is more kind of string to wood. Yeah, you know, transfer yes, that, of, that of, certainly, uh, you know, it's going to give you more sustain. Yeah, and uh, and more tone. I think that's yeah. exactly what they're doing. More tone. It's one of those kind of, I don't. Yes, just a different tone. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, it's it's hard. Certainly, I think you get that kind of. I think the sustain thing is is a is a is definitely a sort of a, a proven, you know, the, the way in which you kind of the, the string becomes in contact with mm -hmm. the, the the body of the guitar is important. Mm -hmm. um, the tone and the volume pots on here will be different, and quite often again you find uh, that now that that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Yes, obviously it, you know because these are the things these are the first things to go wrong. Yeah, volume pots when you're gigging all the time you're constantly rolling them on yeah. and off. Um, and uh, they, they just, you know, if it's a high quality pot, which I'm yeah. sure it is, yeah. in the American one, that's just going to last you longer. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, less repair bills. Well, let, let's just, let's play some stuff on it, because I, I kind of think, yeah, it, it becomes very much that decision, do I spend 500 or do I spend 1200 on, on the bass, becomes, some of it will be based around you playing the two instruments and, and um, choosing which one you think is better for you. Mm -hmm. And then some of, of course, it's going to yeah. be that nagging thing at the back of your head that you can't quite put your finger on that just says, do I want the American one? Because that's kind of the home of Fender and it's where, you know, it's where all my favorite bass players, that's, you know, that's typically where their instruments would be from. Yeah. And there's a definite something intangible there that's just kind of there's a nice fluffier feeling about walking out of a guitar shop with an American made instrument I, I totally than there is agree. with a with a totally you know agree. someone made Plus, elsewhere you know also the case thing is, is to, you know that's, that's not um, yeah. forget that you know that is a big thing yeah. and I'm sure you'd have to pay a lot of money for a, a case like that you yeah know, if you to buy it separately which you're going to have to do with the Mexican you're going to have to if you yeah. want a nice case with it you're going to yeah. pay for it we should, uh, at some point in this video, uh, maybe even now, uh, all the different colour options and neck options for the Mexican P bass will kind of be drifting across your screen, perhaps to some nice incidental sort of lift music. Um, so or, play some. Yeah, play some. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what we can have. Could we have some, lift, some bass lift music? Imagine being trapped in a lift where all you had was bass music. It would be dull. <laughs> it would be, you'd be like, did you hear that thing in the news the other day in, uh, from China? This is, a, this is an awful story to be uh, making a joke out of. Oh. But, uh, you know, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> uh, was that some, they found a woman in a lift where it was in a block of flats in China where the uh, workman had gone in in January, switched off the, the lift because it needed some maintenance. Mm. Then like Chinese New Year had happened. So mm. they um, went home, mm. obviously. And then by the time they came back and they finished the work and they switched the lift back on, they found a bloody woman in there that had been in there, dead obviously, had been in mm. there for a month. Is that a bad story to That's, uh, giggle at the end of? Be bad, I suppose, if that was you. But imagine how much ta how much worse her final moments would have been had there just been bass music going on. The Kenny constantly. G of bass. That's what they call me. That can That's stay. The... Okay, so we're back in the room now. Yeah. We've had a bit of an interlude somewhere here, which I'm hoping people leave as much in as possible, because I thought it was very funny, um, but potentially borderline offensive to some people. Mm. Um, so that's the, that's the key, isn't it? I know what we were talking about. As a professional musician yourself, mm. do you just kind of go, um, 
I'm, I am going to buy higher end gear to tour with, even though I can't necessarily feel or hear a difference between this and the and the uh, the cheaper one. Uh, but I'm just because I just want that you know I want that peace of mind. Well, I, I think I buy it for all the reasons that we discussed. Really, just um, just the high quality bits and pieces that are involved. Yeah, and I think it's going to last longer. Yeah. Um, and yes, you know. If you're talking about Les Pauls, do I want an American one or do I want an Epiphone? I'm going to have an American one. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I sometimes, yeah. Well, look, so. It, but it's I, a personal thing. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. not saying, yeah, listen, whatever. You know, it's what anybody wants to do is fine by yeah. me. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting one. So I, I think that that's what we're kind of driving home, really, is that yes, you can see some better quality hardware on the American one, which, which, which should uh, stand up to the rigors a bit more. Yeah. Um, but the Mexican one sounds great, feels great looks cool um so it's really a very personal decision at the end of the day and there isn't a bad one i mean that's that's i suppose that's the most important message is you know the, the the for half the price you're not getting half the bass you're getting a great bass but look i think what we want to do now is just want to hear some 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 tunes on this um again loads of different colors millions of different players you, you know we've got Guys like, you know, session legends, like, you know, like Pino Palladino and Donald Duck Dunn. And, uh, and then we've got kind of, you know, songwriting, you know, bandy kind of people like John Deacon and Adam Clayton and all those kind of guys. You know, they're just, the P bass is to the bass world, I guess, kind of what the Strat is to the guitar world, oh, isn't totally. it? It just, it just is an integral part of, mm -hmm. you know, modern music. No, let's sign out now. Thank you very much, Nathan, for another wonderfully uh, interesting half an hour of bass talk. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and please join us next week. This is going out weekly show now on All About the Bass from Editons TV. Called the lift. I think I've seen that. And then the lights go out, and, and then somebody wakes up, and somebody's yeah. dead. And literally, yeah. all you hear in the background is. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs>